The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, in this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink. And the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned into blood, and the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. So again, a lot to unpack here with the water being turned to blood. But a few things I want to point out here is that, again, this, this happened to Egypt where the waters are turned to blood. And what was the purpose of it? So that they can't drink, right? And what happens when you can't drink? You're going to be very thirsty. And the, the symbolic meaning here is the world can't satisfy that spiritual drink that you need, that refreshing that you need. Like Jesus Christ said that, you know, there's, there's spiritual waters, right? There's living waters that you need to receive. As he, when he was talking to the woman at the well, for example, and was referencing salvation, as, hey, you know, you come here to draw water, but I could give you water where you'll never thirst again. But Egypt, Egypt can't provide that water. The, Egypt, the Egyptian water is corrupt. Spiritually speaking, there is no life, no sustenance that you're going to get from the world when it comes to that life prov uh, provision. Because we all need water physically to survive. Well, all that water is corrupt. And not only is it corrupt, but it's corrupt with blood. And you think about all the blood that's shed in the world by wicked people in this world and the blood that's shed. Well, this is kind of bringing that to light and bringing that to focus about how wicked the world is. Say, you know what? You can't have life. Why? Because you're so wicked because the ground is filled with the blood of the innocents. And if we could look at the spiritual picture of the United States of America today with all the innocent blood that has been shed on our soil through the baby murder and, and, you know, and among many other crimes and many other things that have been going on unpunished with no judgment and no justice for wicked people doing wicked things, you know, to bring it all to light just into vision, it wouldn't surprise me for all of our lakes and waters and streams to be turned into blood either to just show you the spiritual condition that the country is. This is what was being done in Egypt. He's just showing the spiritual condition of that nation and what it could provide for you, and it could provide nothing. And in fact, it stinks, right? The fish died, and then you got these rotting corpses, and the whole land just stinks because it could provide nothing. I mean, it's decaying, it's rotting. That's what Egypt offers you. And take this to heart when you're looking at Egypt, when you're looking at the great buildings, right? Because the pyramids, when you're looking at all these great advancements and how awesome and wealthy Egypt is and how great a place Egypt is. And obviously, you don't know, apply this for today. We don't live in that time, but you know what I'm talking about. You look at the, the fancy buildings, the fancy skyscrapers, the wealth of whatever city, whatever place. If it's just the world's good and what the world provides, it may look good on the outside, but you know what's really filled with? Rotting. It stinks. What, what's happening here is God showing people physically the state of what, of what that place is going to bring you, of what Egypt will do for you.